Hi, I'm back. My name is Susan, and this is the part of the video where I overdo it completely, screw some things up, and then show you how to fix the issues I make. So, um, what I'm doing, I'm wetting the cat again because I want to add in a little more color wet on wet style because I want a little bit darker color in places, a little more fur. And with the with the with the paper wet, I was going to say with the water wet. Water is always wet. With the paper wet, um, the the paint spreads. Like I said, I'm using some granulating colors, like um, sepia, burnt umber. Um, I use some raw umber or raw sienna. Sorry, can't keep my colors straight. Um, in this painting. There's a lot of burnt sienna on the boots. I'm, I'm going to add a little raw sienna to the face where it's a little bit more tan instead of gray. So across the top of the cat's head is it's pretty much solid dark color. So I'm adding some paint across the top. Sadly, I can't enlarge this to where I can really see what I'm doing because that's okay. Okay, now I enlarged it to where I can see what I'm doing in the in the video so I can tell you what I'm doing. I'm gonna cut out and back in for a minute. So I'm just adding some of the, the fur on the top of the cat's head and adding some of the darker places along the side over there and then on the face where I kind of left a big gaping white hole. So I'm mostly using a combination of sepia and um, lamp black, which furs out nicely because they're granulating colors and the water just kind of carries them around and the pigments granulate, they separate out, and that makes it look fuzzy. I'm actually painting with a scrubber brush. I'm adding some raw sienna to the tan parts now. I, I do a lot of animal paintings and I am kind of lazy about changing brushes, probably because I set them down wherever I set them down and then can't find them. So tend to paint with whatever brushes in my hand unless I'm really looking for something specialized. But so I'm just happily painting along with the cheap round scrubber brush. It's called a fix-it brush. I usually paint on Baohong Academy 100% cotton cold pressed paper. And the texture of the paper itself, along with the granulated paints, makes for really nice fur effects. Sometimes I go with rough pressed if it's a really long haired cat or dog. But this is my favorite paper and it takes a lot of abuse and scrubbing and reworking. A little later I'll show you how to um, how a magic eraser will just kind of take the mistakes right out. I make a lot of mistakes so yeah. 
I also have a lot of fun. So I'm just making the ears a little more pink. And then blending that out. You're probably just going to want to speed up this part of the video unless you're painting along with me because I, I get really futzy here and just kind of I just kind of dabble and scrub and put down paint and pick up paint and just kind of mess with it a lot. I was really getting into the flow of it when my husband walked by, stopped by my door and farted. So I kind of broke my flow state a little bit, and then he kept yelling things at me about dinner. And finally, I got up and shut the door, and <laughs> was, I just didn't want that in the soundtrack. Doesn't matter, I'm voicing it over anyway. Just darkening down the boots in places with with some um, burnt umber. I'm going to darken up, oh, I'm putting in that seam, there's a, or the edge of the boot comes across. You can see I'm just marking that in lightly. I have no idea how that cat got in that boot. I probably said that already. But it sure is cute. I think that's Tui Tiger. It belongs to a friend in Scotland. And I'm just blending with water, dirty paint water, pretty much. I actually have two compartments of water. One, one is kind of the dirty water, and the other one is clean for when I really need clean water. Normally, I'll dip it in the dirty water if I'm painting something that's kind of off-white. It works. That's where I took up some kind of purple palette dirt for that tag. It does kind of have a grayish, purpley cast to it in the photo.
And here's where I try to paint in the uh, label <laughs> before, before letting it dry. And it just kind of smears all out, so I pick it up with the tissue. And then I wait to do it over. Darkening some of the lines. problem on this paper with, with artist tape tearing the paper, but it's always the first time, so if you run the tape, it'll come up easier. with that some uh, and put a new hand on the other thing. You'll see by the end of this video that I did not do a good job of that, so I'll be taking a scrubber to that and making it more even. I always figure if I really, I really screw things up badly, I can, it's just a piece of paper and I can redo it. Usually the second time through goes a lot faster because I, I know exactly what to do where and which colors are working and which colors don't. This is my first time through on this painting, so the odds are usually pretty good that, you know, I don't know, lately 50-50 that it's, <laughs> that I'm going to like it or there's going to be some issues that I don't like. So far though, I'm, I'm liking the looks of the, the Sherpa fur inside the boot. It really looks, I mean, it looks kind of fluffy.
I should have probably just left you know, the edge of that label the way it was because nobody would ever know besides me that that I didn't match the edge very well. <laughs> and now it's going to look dumb because I kind of, I didn't get the colors blended well. But I can fix that. People always say watercolor is such a hard medium to paint in because it's so unforgiving. You know, and like acrylic and oil, you can go back over things, but I, you can fix things in watercolor too. And unlike oil or acrylic, when you're painting on a piece of paper, you're painting on a piece of paper. So it's no big loss if you mess up a piece of paper. that in the video? What's that? You want that in the video soundtrack? So, can I undo the shrimp for supper? Yes. That's okay. Okay, so I let it dry there, and now I have a little teeny tiny, it's a little teeny tiny scrubber brush that's kind of flat, so it's good for making those little lines. This one is called a Princeton Select Lunar Blender 8th Inch, but just use what you have. <laughs> there is really no need to... Um, acquire 500 brushes and in this case do as I say not as I do because I've never met a, a new kind of brush that I didn't oh, want. shut up! God. But any, any, How any fine brush you? will work. You know, a small like number one detail brush is what I would normally <laughs> use but this thing was in my hand so I used it. Oh, now I switched to the little detail brush for the other label. Now I'm going to attempt to do the bear paw letters. And my hands aren't very steady. I've kind of gotten... You know, as I got old, my hands are a little shakier, so I'm, I'm not too worried about it because this is a watercolor and, you know, you can, it doesn't need to be perfect. doing the little paws, little paw marks over there.
putting in some hairs with the with the detail brush. darkening some of the some of the markings on the head on the ears I'll go back and kind of smudge that stuff out too These dark markings I, I transferred using transfer paper. Those are kind of important. It makes it a lot easier to paint over them with the dark paint if, you know, if there's pencil markings there. And I know I made the, the transfer paper markings are kind of light. So, you know, next time I do a video, I'll make sure they're a lot darker so people can see. But this is, this is my first time, so hey okay this is about where I should have quit while I was ahead because you know, from here you know, some of these markings over on the left need to be extended a bit but from here I'm pretty much just <laughs> overworking the paper and screwing things up which is okay because I can show you how I fix things then. Like I said, next time around, next time around if I paint it again, it'll be a lot faster and probably a lot better. using water to kind of smudge things around, work on that fluffiness factor. The label is actually a little off-white, so I added a little bit of color once the letters dry. You can do that without smudging it much. It's watercolor. It's all about the water. And whether the paper is dry or wet, it looks a little bit of so that's kind of what comes with practice a lot because it's paper. The paper I use is, is pretty inexpensive. The Baohong, Baohong Academy paper focus. Um, it's about half the price of, of Archie's or Arch. I can't it that uh, I, I order it directly from AliExpress, but it's, I don't know, in my opinion, it's every bit as good as some more expensive brands. It's just, it costs a lot less, so I feel a lot more free to, to make messes and wreck things and go over. And it's one of those things, the more you paint, the better you get. 
started painting pets at the beginning of the the day of COVID pandemic. I painted pets several times a week. And the more I painted, the better I got. Somehow, cats have kind of become my thing. I mean, I like cats, but I'm allergic to them, so, um, you know, that's kind of odd. But, but they're fun. They're really fun to paint because they're fluffy and they have such great expressions. And here I'm, here you can see I have a little tiny chunk square rectangular and a chunk of magic eraser and I'm using the little edges to kind of bring back some of the white up between the markings up on the head. And if I take too much off it's okay because I can just go back in there with paint. The magic erasers do such a great job of of spreading the paint around first to make everything looks, look fluffy and also of just picking up paint and bringing it almost back to white. So you can see it, there you can see I'm, I'm lifting off some of the spots where that got too dark kind of scrubbing that up with the magic eraser. Just turning things around so I can, so I can use the magic eraser easier. One thing you can do if you're really having trouble, like following a reference photo, is turn your painting upside down, turn your reference photo upside down, and then your brain will kind of butt out and you know stop. Telling you, telling you how your brain thinks it should be, and you can see things a little better. See so there, you can see I'm erasing the edge of the ears, but I kind of go too far, so I have to bring some of that back. But I want that edge, the edges of the ears, white. I'm just softening the edges a little more. The thing with a magic eraser is to rub very gently. So you can lose your whole painting with a magic eraser. But if you use it very gently, it has a nice effect and it can make it can make your little fur look like fur. So now you can see I've taken off a little too much around the left eye. Uh, I'll be going back in and putting more paint down.
clean that up some more. Here's another place where I should have quit while I was ahead on the erasing the ears because no one would know if, you know, that the ears are smaller than what I have there. But I have pencil lines in there too, so those make me unhappy. I'll paint those out later with the marker. Just lightening up the paw. I got too too dark on the left side of the nose there, so lifting that off. back and outlining the ears a little more. And the eye. So. Oh, I paint on paint, then I lighten it, then I darken it, then I lighten it. When you have good paper, you can do that. Cheap paper just kind of falls apart when you mess with it too much, so I'm putting my little ear tufts up there. I missed some of the markings up there by the ears, so I'm kind of putting some paint on and then I'll, I'll smear it around a little bit with water and let it spread out. Just kind of wipe it with a tissue.
That's funny because watching this and talking along with it, I just want to yell at myself to stop already. <laughs> like, just stop putzing with it. But the ears aren't quite done. I think the absolute hardest thing about watercolor is stopping, stopping before you overdo it. I keep checking back with the reference photo to make sure I have the, you know, the, the lines on the head, the kind of M-shaped markings that, that I have them, you know, roughly, right? I mean, they don't stay, stay the same constantly on the cat, so I don't know why it needs to be perfect in a painting. But you want it mostly to look like the cat, you know, on an average day. And just a little bit of marking around the paw. Here's a definite case of um, I could have quit there and not messed with with putting the edge of the boot back in there because it looked, I mean, from here, as I'm watching it, it looks fine. But I get really focused in on those details and then it's really hard to stop. No, I'm just thinking, well, what else? I need to bring back some of the white on the edges of the ears. 
I think I'm over there looking for a marker. There, it's a Posca. I, I've started using Posca pens because I gave up on gel pens because they just, the jelly rolls, the, 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 the um, <laughs> I mean, I started with jelly rolls. I can't get them to write on paint. I have uh, Uniball Signos. I can't get those to write on paint. So I have gone to Posca pens, which are like acrylic paint markers. I use the white to bring back some of the whites and then I smudge them with my fingers so they don't get too white. And then a lot of times I paint over <laughs> to darken them back down. But I, I really just wanted the, the edge of the ears white for now and in the absolute final final touches will be to add in whiskers and add in the hairs on the ears and I'll do that with a finer fine point pasta pen the other option is you can you can mask this stuff out with masking fluid so I'm allergic to latex so I, I use the pebio um, blue masking fluid and it doesn't always come up without leaving a little bit of blue on the paper so so you know I use the pens you do what you gotta do oh got my scrubber just kind of scrubbing little for the heck of it <laughs> trying to trying to kind of blend that white in get rid of that pencil line but I'll, if that's yeah I do kind of manage to get rid of most of that so. Almost done with this video. I was thinking I wouldn't have to go to a, a fourth video, but I think I'm going to have to just to show you how I do the whiskers and how I do the markings on the ears and possibly do a little bit of a background though I don't know if this paint painting really needs it. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with my little cat in a mood. Even though I've like overworked it a bit and <laughs> I think it's I think he's kinda cute anyway. I just blend out the white I just put in and think I'm gonna add more pink in the ear. And then the next video I will just um, put in the finer hairs that I and I do that with a pen. I could do it with a nib, you know, like a calligraphy nib. I could do it with gouache, but gouache fades in really bad. So, Dr. P. H. Martin's um, white pen ink works pretty well. Um, bleed proof white works well. You could use a, a rigger brush, a liner brush to do the hairs, but I, I usually just use a pen. up the edge of the ear up there. This video got too long. I putzed around way too much. So, <laughs> like I said, this is my first how-to series of videos.
And there it is for now, and I'll... <laughs> a little bit more magic erasering, and then I will let, let it be and be back in uh, the next video to draw on the final details and probably sign my name to it and maybe paint a, paint a light background. Clean up some of the paint spills from... I don't know if you noticed me dropping the brush, but it happens a lot. Oh, see you later. Okay.